really windy today. So you're probably going to hear a lot of wind noise, but this is Luna. Sitting in the water. It's from the outside view. Hopefully you can see that okay. So I've taken all the covers off so you can see all the windows. I've left the cover on the flybridge because it's still really cold so I'm not going to bother with that. And I've taken the covers off the rear and left the roof. So she's there in all her, all her sun shining beauty. So she's a 9 metre Antares Beneteau. 9 metres about 30 foot length overall. She's powered by a Volvo Penta D4, 264 horsepower shaft drive and uh, it's a 2008 model and uh, it's a one with a flybridge so it's got uh, steering wheel, hydraulic steering uh, up on the top as well uh, and you can obviously pilot from both places so it's got a blue hull, it's recently been out of the water and it's had its uh, survey everything come up come back really nice a uh, nice dry hull uh, and uh, probably needs the anodes done at some point that'll be a next year when it lifts out the water and uh, we'll have a look around probably starting at the front the obvious thing is the anchor it's got electric windlass uh, that's controlled from the inside the cabin and also out here with remote control under that hatch and uh, it's got quite a lot of chain that later. Up on the front here we've got the teak, uh, flexi teak, which a previous owner put that on the boat, that's not standard. Uh, so it looks like wood but it's actually a plastic material. Uh, it's been done really well and it's really good for uh, walking on uh, in the wet because it's really grippy. Uh, there's a window light there that leads into the front cabin and uh, on the side, as you probably can see, we've got um, portals down here that portal there is the one into the front cabin uh, and this lot, this one here goes into the uh, into the head so another good look at the front there it's really nice and tidy really nice and uh, no marks on the hull at all really pleased you can see the portal over here so we'll go and uh, have a little look aboard so we're just about to hop on here here's her name Luna. It's actually quite a long walk down if we ever look back up into the sun. It's going to be very windy, I think. So. And there's the uh, view up onto the flybridge from the side. And these are the window covers that go over here. These windows open on the side. So, round back onto the deck at the back, you can see the back of the back of the boat has all got uh, flexi teak in there as well. Some really nice, big, thick gunnels on the side and nice steps so you can walk into it when it's parked this way it would normally be would normally stern stern in uh, in which case you would access it from the bathing platform back you get to it through that little door on the other side so here you can see the ladder up to the top and the cover i've got the sides take it unzipped so you can see these uh, uh sides with some um, uh, the covers off. We're all aboard. So we're aboard now, obviously. There's a little door at the back. That's um I don't know how you actually open that. Looks like there must be a latch or something. Oh no, it's just a pull. So that's the pull open. Walk out onto the rear bathing platform. You can see her name on the back there. And it's got a swim ladder. It's got some davits here for attaching a dinghy on the back, like a uh, little tender. So coming back, looking at it from the rear, out the back, it's quite nice and spacious. Really sort of more traditional boat-like. Again, with those nice big gunnels with the uh, rod holders, which will work well with the uh, magma cooker. Little seat at the back, and there's under, under deck storage. Uh, which you can have a look at in a minute. So we'll have a look at this deck storage. You just lift them up and turn it, something like this. So now we got down into the, the bells of it, so that's where all the um, propeller goes through down there. Uh, and behind here there's your, uh, your bulkhead. Uh, 
uh, all this at the back here is uh, water, I believe. Uh, I that's what it is. I think it is all water under there. Well, waste water, I think. Waste. It's a waste tank. It all sits under there. So for now, I've just put the fenders in there and uh, some ropes. Big heavy old doors. Fortunately, I've cut myself, which is uh, a bit of a pain. We're back on the back here, and just around here, we've got some little deck shower. So that's hot and cold water. It runs all the time when, or, or the power, the pumps engage all the time when your switches are on. And then down here, you've got the um, little gas bottle that does the cooker. Well, quite handy. Uh, there's another storage thing here, which we might as well look at lift up. And this has got, uh, this is really just the same as the other side, but it's got fresh water. So uh, there's the uh, fresh water tank, the fresh water tank just there. Uh, I think that must be something to do with a, some sonar or something. Uh, and then you've got a stern thruster with power switch off here, so that disables the stern thruster. And here, manual, these big things that you see down there, metal rusty things, I think that's the manual rudder, should you have a rudder problem. In fact, that's what that covers for now, I remember. All very good. From here we can see the nice big wide um, sides on it. Really nice to walk up. And uh, the access up to the flybridge up here, we'll go up there in a minute. And then over here, this side as well. So it's just equal side space either side, and that's the filler point for the fuel tank. Shore power hooks up here. The socket here, I need to get a cable for it. And just here, you've got um, a manual build, which you put a pipe, a little lever in, and pump it up and down. So we're going to have a look on the bit on the flybridge. <laughs> I might as well stay with the camera. Very cold up here today, but we'll see what it looks like. So there's your view. So two chairs, You've got the steering wheel and everything under that cover, which I'm not going to take off today. And as you can see, there's a nice big frame around everything, big rock launches, as they say. And then up here we've got a big radar thing, which uh, I've got to figure out how to work all that. You've got your radio, radio antenna here, and then. VHF antenna as well and I think I'm not really sure what all that is I'll figure it all out and then the back of the cover at the top as you can see we're in the arena we're in South Sea at the moment there's some offices just sort of over in the distance and there's a restaurant just here with the, all the marina facilities so it's just a temporary berth while we, until we get to Chichester you can hear it blowing a gale it will be windy on the camera yeah, it's a nice, nice view. So we'll go back there. So we're about to go into the cabin. It's a, it's shoes off territory now. I'll take my hat off as well, actually. Um, and we'll go into the cabin. So here's the cabin from, uh, from the back door. It's got a sliding rear door, uh, which is a, a single sliding door. Or, and uh, it opens half, which is really nice. And then on the right, we've got the cooker and the tap, uh, hot and cold, safe, sink, everything. And around here, we've got little seating area. We can probably sit half a dozen people around there with a table. And uh, coming around here, there's a little gas cooker here. And uh, just underneath this area, if you look back, you can see there's a fridge. So it's quite needs a bit of cleaning, but it's got the it's already got the wine in it and a couple of bevies, as you do. And then down here we've got storage, which is kind of just temporary at the moment, but again, nice good storage. Um, in the back here, what we see down in there, you've got all your power connections and your hot water taps and everything like that, all your pipes. Which obviously, Phil's got to understand all that and get his head around it, as you do. And then here. There's another, I've already started putting some stuff in it. They've all got these little latches here that you push in and they lock and this little bit pops up. So every everywhere you go you'll see me pushing these. It's obviously for stopping things moving around when you're on the water. 
nice couple of cupboards here which is really nice this is the knife and fork one or this utensil which is really nice and then obviously it's a, another bit of a junk one but i think lynn will soon fill all that up probably with junk so this is lifting up and if i just pull this little spring clip here i can lower it down so now we get a, to a nice top to it and uh it sort of becomes more of a sort of stuff you can place you can put things on for during the day etc for lighting it's got uh, lights up in the ceiling one uh, four lights and uh, four corners and as we look around and look further to the helm we can see that the um there's a like a really nice ceiling height where i'm sat or stood sorry and if i go forward it's really nice and tall up here and you've got these uh display date gauges at the moment so this one's giving us our depth um can't see that it's it must be more than three feet there's something wrong there i've uh, got the vhf and then we've got a radio a barometer clock and some other gadgets again i've no idea what they do and uh, some curtains that cover it all up so the curtains pull along the front here they pop onto these little clips just here and uh, conceal it all nicely and then these curtains at the back come all the way along and obviously there's big big lot big ones for the back window so the whole thing can become real closed and untidy so it's a really nice uh nice uh sort of plain cushions i quite like them because it just because they're white and light soft color they don't dominate the room and under each cushion there's each one of them has storage lots of storage everywhere uh, and the same goes for the ones up over the back there and around here so now onto the important bit which is the helm so there's the helm seat the helm seat's got your these the steering the helm instruments so it's currently got a rain marine plotter which has got the maps um, the radar doesn't work for some reason it's a bit well, you need to understand and have a look at it but it's not working properly uh, and over here you've got all your gauges for the en engines or for the engine rather and then you've got your windlass up and down so uh, we'll start the motor up shortly and have a little listen to it run under here we've got some nice little bit of storage for just security and, and stuff really nice um, solid wood steering wheel it's all the woods really nice condition and that's proper solid ship like stainless steel in fact that's what really drew us to it was just the lovely finish of it and it's been really well looked after for its 2008 model the helm here uh, we've got um, some controls for this is your main engine forward reverse and throttle obviously it's um, all electric fly-by-wire so it's Volvo Penta is the make of it and it's uh, it's all electric so there's no cables it's all computer driven um, from the from the engine um, and that unit there is the controller for the uh, for the engine and it lets you dial into the uh, engine hours and diagnostics and stuff like it, that and it all comes up on this little display just here um, it's where everything is that little dis display there should have shows you everything uh, bow thrusters uh, sorry bow um, planes or, or um, trim tabs uh, so do they just put metal plates down at the back so they were working obviously just make it ride flat in the water when you wasn't along and then over here we've got two thrusters we've got the, the bow thruster and the stern thruster um, it's not very common to have a stern thruster but in a single engine boat I think that'll be quite handy for maneuvering and then over here we've got the fuel gauge the windscreen wipers and screen wash etc um, it's got a bit of shore power connections a few of these dotted through the boat now so that's really handy for anything we might be plugging in uh, and a radio which obviously we'll upgrade at some point and looking around here just behind this seat here you've got a bit of area space here i think this seat here this here swoops, rotates over to become a helm seat so it rotates and you can sit on that as a as a helm uh, sorry as a co-pilot looking forward if you want to and obviously you've got your grab grab rails here with those little this little storage area here and obviously that doubles as storage down in there as well so here we go here's the helm
So that's the helm. I think what we'll do now is we'll take a wander down here and we'll have a look downstairs. So here's the view looking from the little bottom of the stairs, looking up into the uh, living part of the boat. I've just come down these stairs here and I'm stood in, a, I suppose, a little landing area, I suppose. Um, down here is all the juicy stuff, all the switches for all the batteries and the engines and the bow thrusters and the anchors and everything. So I'm all getting my head around all that at the moment. It's a big bit. The engine's just literally under under that bit there, under the mats. You've got to lift the mat out and then tip the sides up, which uh, I'll do shortly and we can have a look at the engines. Uh, there's a little grab rail here and then above that you've got your control panel for all your electrics. So that's quite handy. I've got, see there's a few of them being overridden with stuff. Um, and that one up there is telling me the batteries are good. And uh, over here you've got all your other stuff that you'll be running water pumps so the water pump runs all the time um, and it builds up a pressure at the taps and then it turns off and then when you turn the tap back on it just turns on so you don't have to get messing around with taps or switches uh, it's got Webasto heating so it's got electric uh, air, air blowing heating diesel heating so that's the controller for it it's some pretty simple sink thing you just turn the dial up and it turns on um, if I go back up in here and I look up over here you'll see down over there the black vent so that's the one for the upstairs and there's one of those down on the heads and the master bedroom as well the electrical point here and i suppose this is a bit of a funny area but it's got just a big storage shelf which i think will come in quite handy just for you know you always got stuff to, to keep tidy and then here there's a there's a microwave with storage under it i don't know whether we'll use the microwave or not um, and then here we've got more storage there are all the manuals for the boat everything obviously you get to see you're looking at the hull of the boat there that white bit that's the pretty much the the, the uh, as deep as it goes and again more power sockets for use so it's all very handy uh, there's one of those lights on the side for natural light uh, i'm not sure if these lights some of these lights had no bulbs in them so they're broken and this is um looking through into the back of the steering wheel so that's the hydraulic system so it's all driven by hydraulic steering up and top and below and uh, there's some of the back of the electrics for the all the helm obviously Phil will have to get his head into all that at some point and understand how it all works so into the uh, heads so this is the bathroom or heads uh, it's um, got a portal light which is nice it's got a mirror uh, it's got hot and cold water from the tap and you just take this um, thing here and you clip it up in here and that gives you your shower um, and pretty simple stuff I'll just stuff that down there again uh, it's a bit rusty the fittings are just obviously just corroded for over 15 years so nothing wrong with the plumbing it's just the, the, the chrome's got been had a bit of a hard time so I'll get that all replaced uh, nice storage in here toiletries and uh, the toilet obviously uh, it's a pumping toilet so it's got a holding tank and you do some switches there and jiggle things around and that's how it works uh, I, again I don't I don't know how all that works at the moment here's a little cup under the stairs um, probably just needs a little bit of just needs a little bit of adjustment there I think because it keeps falling in but that's the um, that's the cupboard there. It's got a shower, that's the pump for the shower to drain the water when you have the shower. That's all very good and the headroom in it's great. I can stand in there and no problem at all. Um, these little recesses, you'll see one here in the ceiling and there's another one just here. Uh, that's the wiper motors for the windscreens. Screen. Here we go and there's uh, that's the, that's the hallway, shall we say. So here's a, the door into the front room, into the, the, the berth. So the berth is uh, a nice size. And it's got a little bit of carpet here. You've got to be careful because when you walk in, that's flat. But that bit there is the hull of the boat goes upwards. So if you're not careful, you end up cringed over the bed. Because you've got off balance. Obviously, it's something you just get used to. Um, but it's a nice size. It's got a portal here 
Uh, it's got uh, a couple of mirrors in it, and it's got another portal the other side. Currently, it's got a light in the corner there. Got another light just up here, and it's got natural daylight coming in from the the head, the light overhead, which obviously can open should we want to get a bit of fresh air. So, and uh, it's got some really nice deep storage on the side here, which is really nice, and uh, it's. It's probably a double double bed at the top here and it probably tapers a little bit at the bottom but the nice thing is I can stretch out with room to spare which is really nice and plenty of storage over here again just there, nice deep storage and I think there's probably even storage under here somewhere yeah, there is and then uh, a nice little bit of storage just here and, uh, with a hanging rail um, but I've just got a bit of stuff in there as you can see Mm. and storage up here power everything you might need it's kind of got a coating up here it's got a layer of sort of fabric leather which just looks to be that it's um sort of probably sound deadens it a little bit from the water so uh, i've got to uh, do a little bit of cleaning on it it's got a little bit of mold on it but on the whole considering it's 2008 model um it's in really nice condition so there we go there's the heads and the front room and the boat so uh we'll probably just walk back up here i don't know about that you check under there there might be storage under there I see. oh yeah i didn't think seen that before oh yeah there's your screen wash for your windscreen check that out learn something new every day so there we go walk back up and uh, around sun's shining nice although it's really cold so there she is i think the, all that uh, i've got to do now is lift all the floor up and we'll have a little pokey around at the engine see you soon so i've just lifted the table out and there's the storage this table here comes out completely or storage air box and then i've lifted the cushions and you can now see two big hatches there, that's where the fun begins. So there's the engine hatch is lifted up and we can start to see the motor. So uh, there's the motor. Here's the back of the engine with the gearbox, electric gearbox. That's the engine. The side, you can see it's got uh, all the gubbins on it. I haven't even gone near any of that stuff yet. I've just been poking around up top up top but got the batteries i think they're the starter batteries there um and then over here on the other side you've got the big cover here which has the house batteries under that cover and this is the webasto heating unit so that's the air uh, the unit that basically heats the 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 cabin and there's the ducting as you can see the black stuff running along there these big vent holes in the side, they're actually through the hull, hull of the side of the boat. If you have a look, you'll see uh, in the first picture, um, these funny looking grills and they, they're fresh air into this hatch, which is all sealed. And it's all sealed from the outside by these rubber seals here onto the hatch. So the engine breathes air coming in from the side of the boat. So this is all kept clean. There's the exhaust, exhaust, wet exhaust running out through there. And it runs out through the side of the um, here and along and then it runs up and inside the side of the boat there and it pops out the back over in the back corner we'll have a listen to it running shortly uh, that's the waste tank for the toilet i believe um, i don't know how it all works but that's what i believe it is and you can see all the electrics for the batteries are all up under here and then there's more electrics over here it's like um, a little phil's little heaven this is and then down here we've got the supercharger on the side, oil filters, it's a D4260 model. And uh, this is the seawater in here, so there's your big seawater filter here. So that's the cooling water for the interchanger, heat exchanger. You've got a fuel filter here. And then all this gubbins over here, uh, down in here is that steel, that's a hot water tank for the, wa for the domestic water. And I think it's all heat, this all runs off um, the uh, engine, when the engine's running it runs 
and then I think there's a power socket up under here so when it's plugged into shore power that unit will heat the hot water all the time so I think that's pretty good explanation of what we've got so far um, and uh, short of me going into miles of detail I really don't know how any of this really works at the minute but you know Phil will figure it out so there's the shaft drive there I think it's quite a big shaft looks about an inch and a inch and three eighths or something inch and a half drive so uh, there's some areas you've got to be really careful of which is like the seawater making sure the seawater filter has not got any debris in it because that stops the cooling to the engine and checking the oil regularly and you just check the oil through that dipstick yeah. it's a common rail engine so it's got electric injectors uh, it's turbocharged there's a turbocharger just there as you see that little thing there um, I think it's supercharged as well I think there's a blower on it somewhere but uh, shall I start it up we'd like to hear it so we're going to start her up, we turn the key on, we get some lights, we get some beeps, we get some lights down here, and then uh, we're running at 50, I've had it running today, and I'll just turn the key to crank like a normal engine and hold it. seen one diesel engine run, you've seen them all. We'll just go over the back here. 